good morning and happy hump day or Wednesday who, for people who need me to be a little more specific. <laughs> we are so glad you joined us today. I can't believe you went there <laughs> right off the top. <laughs> you know we're having trouble, Clyde, keeping up with days. So yep. yes, <laughs> it is indeed. Wednesday, and we're glad you're spending your Wednesday morning with us. Yeah, we are. Good morning to you, Mo. Hey, Clyde. Hey, Clyde, did you know that it is National Frog Jumping Day? <laughs> okay, yeah. I know it sounds like something I just made up, but <laughs> I actually collect frogs. Ah. And I'm going to show you a couple of the frogs. This is one of my favorites. Ah. I don't know if you can you see this. It's like a painted terrarium, and it has a frog in the middle. It was given to me about 18 years ago from our director, PK. And that is one of my all-time favorites. And then this is one of my favorites, too. Looks like an ordinary mug, but look inside. Ah. There's a little frog staring back <laughs> at you. So I have, I have shelves and shelves of frogs. I'm telling you, shelves and shelves. I got like five shelves full of frogs. And you've in, kissed on a, a few. Wall in my house. Yeah, I have. <laughs> we had candy. We lost count on how many. <laughs> so Clyde. <laughs> What? It's another special day today. Yeah, it is. It's National Apple Pie Day. And so, uh, you know, we raised the question, what kinds of apples do you use in uh, national in, in the apple pies that you make? The other thing we ask is what's a better pie or what's a, what's better apple pie or apple crumble? I'm a pie guy myself. OK, I am not either. I don't like pie at all. <laughs> Somehow. And plus, I wouldn't bake one, so I know nothing about it. <laughs> Somehow, I'm not surprised. But anyway, happy National <laughs> Apple Pie Day. You know, food is uh, uppermost in our minds right now because a whole lot of us are uh, stuck at home and we're trying to find stuff to cook just to pass time. But you know, not everybody can be a master chef when it comes to making dinner. However, our unique circumstances have forced a lot of people to pick up a spatula and learn. That's where a local cooking company comes in. They bring the lessons to you in a casual, comfortable atmosphere. And here now is Jordan Hammond. She's the owner of, uh, I'm sorry, Tablespoon Cooking Company. And she's going to tell us more uh, about all of uh, how you can get prepared to make your own family meal. Uh, Jordan, thank you so much for talking to us today. Uh, thanks for having me, Clyde. Indeed. Now, you've been with us before on the program, so remind us how Tablespoon got started and why you thought the community needed something like this right now. Yeah, Tablespoon started in 2016. We're located at Finley Market, and we teach hands-on cooking classes by professional chefs. They're in a very laid-back and fun environment, and our chefs will show you recipes from start to finish and show you how you can cook better food at home and have fun doing it. Okay, so now you're now you're cooking online. You're showing us uh, yeah. how to do the cooking online. What's that process like? So it's we try to make it as similar to our in-person classes as possible. The only difference is uh, we aren't actually in person. So you can sign up online, and then we provide ingredient kits. So our chefs will do all the shopping, measure everything out, set you up with a kit of ingredients. You pick it up from us at Finley Kitchen. We do um, contactless curbside delivery. Take it home and then log on for the class and we'll cook together. So I teach them right from my home kitchen here. And then we set up another camera. So you'll have this view of me and then you'll have a view here of um, my hands and the pot and whatever we're working on. So it's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so but people are people have got to provide their own cooking equipment. Do you give them a list of what they need? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we, we will give you, um, we try to make it very simple, and I always can provide, you know, alternatives if you don't have something. But, yeah, you just provide the equipment, have it pulled out and ready to go. We send a list with any sort of prep. It's very minimal. It might just be like washing some vegetables or turning your oven on. And then everything else we do um, together. Uh, okay, so what kinds of skills or what cuisines, for that matter, do you teach during these classes? Yeah, so we're offering a wide range. Last week we did biscuits and scones, and then we did uh, classic curries. This week, um, tomorrow night, we have pizza. So if you want to learn how to make pizza at home, and I actually still have a couple spots available in that. 
And then Friday night, we have um, our date, date night steak and risotto. Ooh. So if you're looking to do, you know, something a little special, date night, uh, you can join us for that one. Ah, steak and risotto. Okay, so uh, talk to us a little bit, Ben, about how folks can find out more about Tablespoon Cooking Company, yeah. or for that matter, these virtual classes. Sure, you can go to our website. It's tablespooncookingco.com, and all of our classes are listed there. We still have spots avail available for this week, so for pizza or steak and risotto, and our ingredient pickup is today from 4 to 6. So you would just need to go online, um, register for one of the classes, and then you'll get all the instructions from there. All right, don't be surprised if I show up for steak and risotto. We would love to have you. <laughs> okay. All right, Jordan, thanks so much for talking all to right. us today. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Absolutely. After the Art Deco era of the 1920s, a magical thing happened in the world of design, the mid-century modern movement. And one local man is dedicated to restoring and preserving pieces from this time period. Right, Mona? That's right, Clyde. And right now I want to welcome Jeff Molsky, the man behind Mid-Century Modern Rescue. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Okay, so tell me, what got you started in just refurnishing old furniture? Well, about three years ago, I was in a uh, local thrift store uh, with one of our children looking for some items, and I saw a really cool chair, but it was in disarray. You know, the wood finish was uh, pretty much gone, and I, I've always been a handy person. So I thought, well, why don't I buy that, fix it up, and see what happens? And so I did that. I took it home, fixed it up, put it online, and I sold it fairly quickly. And I started thinking, huh, there might be something to this. Huh, something to it, huh? Yeah. Right. A little business coming out of it. Right. Well, tell me what you brought. This is unbelievable, the difference between these two pieces. And you bought yeah. them at the same time. They're R a pair. Right. That's why I wanted to bring these today, because mm -hmm. this will truly show you a before and after. Uh, so this is a pair of end tables from the Lane Furniture Company uh, made in the mid-60s. So these tables are about 50 years old. So this is the one on the right is typically what they look like when I find them. Uh, you know, they've been lived in, they've been spilled on, the finish has been destroyed. So I will take a table like this, and mm -hmm. when I'm done with it, uh, I bring it back to the original state of what it looked like when it would have come out of the factory. So this, this is the is after. Just Gorgeous. Now, how long did it take you to make it go from this to this? Uh, this piece usually, you know, this will take a couple hours to get it really? to take all the finish off. And yeah, I've got a pretty good system now that I use myself, so I can I can work pretty quickly on them. And how do you find them? Where do you find these? Uh, most of the pieces I find online. Mm -hmm. uh, people selling it, people cleaning out a house, or maybe their parents moved into a, another mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but since I've been doing this three years now, I do have people reach out to me. All right, so you sell these pieces, so this is a business for you. It is, yes. Yes, and where can people find you online? Uh, the best place to find me, I sell probably 90% of my items, believe it or not, on Instagram. I have an Instagram account that is Mid-Century Modern Rescue, so I'll post things online there, and they actually sell really quickly. All right, so if somebody has, because I have a table that looks a lot like this before <laughs> table. We okay? all do, we all so, do. We all do, right? <laughs> so then how um, we can just reach out to you and it can be something you can refurbish, but give back to us or we can just sell it to you. Yes, I do both. I okay, do both. great. All right, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Jeff. Thank Thanks, you Mara. so much. Thanks. I love it. Yeah, a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Discover how to sell your unwanted home in any location or condition. Here to tell us more is real estate expert and investor Laith Lovata with First Prime Realty Group. Laith, thanks so much for being here and for talking with us today. And let's dive right in. Are people still buying and selling homes right now? Well, most investors have stopped buying. I'm still buying for cash. The reason being is that uh, we, we plan for... Uh, an event like this to happen. Unfortunately, you never know what it's going to be, but uh, the market was uh, appearing that it may, you know, it may regress some. And so we were prepared for this. We're still buying homes during this, uh, during this period of time when most investors are. And so that's how you're able to keep buying for cash at a time, as you said, when other investors aren't, right? Yeah, we're buying homes that need massive repair. So we add value to these homes or we can hold them for long-term rent and hold properties. It just depends on the situation um, and what the seller's going through. We can buy these homes as, as little as three days, but it's really based on the seller's situation and their time frame, not ours. Uh, a lot of cash investors right now 
are afraid of where the market's going to be in the next several months. And we're not afraid of that. We know where we're at. We know where we're going. And we're still able to help those homeowners by buying those properties um, where the homeowner is either facing a, a, a situation or the property is in disrepair. Okay, got it. So now some people uh, are going to need cash right away. So how fast can you buy a home actually? Well, we can buy them really fast. Like I, like I said, we can buy them in as little as three days. What we can do is even allow the sellers to leave what they don't want in the property and we'll take care of it for them. We can even get the sellers uh, money in their pocket for the move before the move. And that's really important if someone needs to relocate, uh, go and move with family, or if they have a medical condition, or if the home is, is just in disrepair, they don't have to make any repairs to those homes. It's a as is situation. And we can just really be a benefit to those homeowners that may need access to that cash in their property right now, because of this pandemic that we're going through. So if, if you've got to release some of that, that equity in your home to take care of some of those bills, and it's something you've been thinking about, you know, selling your house sooner than later is probably a best situation just because the market is changing so fast and that value that's here today may not be there tomorrow. All right, let's talk briefly about some of the other things that people are accustomed to paying out of pocket that they don't when they're uh, working with you. Well, I am the... I am the buyer, so there are no real estate agent commissions. Again, there's no closing costs on these properties. The seller doesn't have to pay any for pay for any costly repairs on the property. The seller can even leave what they don't want in the property, and we'll take care of that for them. And if they need money for the move before the move, we can close on the property, get the money in their pocket to pay for those relocation costs, and then the homeowner can move out of the property. So this makes it a seamless transaction for those who are wanting to buy other properties or those needing to relocate or pay for, pay for some sort of cost that they don't currently have the money to do right now. Well, a lot of folks will be listening to this interview and will want to know more. So uh, how can people who are looking to find out if you can buy their home for cash get in touch with you? Well, it's really simple. You just call my office for no obligation hassle-free cash offer. We'll get you a cash offer within 24 hours. You'll know exactly what you'll net. Uh, we'll take that uh, closing to a third-party title and closing company. We'll make sure that you get your uh, cash at close of escrow, and it's a win-win situation for both parties. So just give my office a call for no obligation cash offer. All right, Leif, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. Well, coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, we've got some tips for when you do your taxes. Financial guru and best-selling author Patrice Washington has some important information for anyone who hasn't filed yet. Hey, that's a lot of people. And then we step into a robotics classroom at UC to discover how they're creating lifelike pets to help keep seniors from being lonely. We have all that so much more right after the break. Welcome back. Well, yes, tax day is coming soon, even though we got a brief reprieve. And while you got that extra time this year, the tax deadline will eventually arrive. Question is, are you ready? Well, joining us today with some tax survival tips is Patrice Washington, a financial expert and author of Real Money Answers for Every Woman, How to Win the Money Game with or Without. A oh, man, Patrice, thank you so much for talking with us today. That's a provocative title, but I like it. <laughs> hey, yes, listen. because we have to be prepared with or without you guys, Clyde. Absolutely, you do. Absolutely, you do. Hey, as a financial, um, as a, uh, financial uh, planning expert, what makes this tax season so unique? Well, that extra 90 days that we all received is what makes it unique. You know, all the tax reform that's happened since the coronavirus shutdown has made it unique. But I'll tell you what's not unique, Clyde. The way Americans are procrastinating. <laughs> we are still waiting until the last minute. And I'm really here to remind you that there's so much you can do with that tax refund. So don't wait. Let's move this thing along. Okay, so I was going to ask you what your top tax advice is. I gather that's it. What's your number two piece? <laughs> 
Well, really, my first thing is about savings. You know, the average American is going to get a $2,800 refund, and that's a big chunk of change right now. And it's a great way to start that emergency fund. If nothing else, we need to understand that savings really does matter. I think this time has shown us that. So I like a site called Smarty Pig. It's a free high yield website that's really easy to use and it'll get you going on those savings goals because you still have a life and there's still things that you want to do post pandemic. So let's start saving for them intelligently. Okay, so what's something that's important for anyone preparing their taxes right now? Clyde, I don't know if you've ever filed your own taxes, but I can tell you from experience, the worst thing is having to run out of ink in the middle of trying to print all these pages down. <laughs> you got so a point. So I'm telling folks, right, I'm telling folks about Epson's EcoTank Pro ET5850 printer. This thing is amazing. It's cartridge-free printing, and you can literally spit out thousands of pages. You can conveniently copy, scan, fax those important docs for filing. Okay, back to the refunds for a moment because everybody's hoping to get one. You have any other suggestions for what to do with those refunds? Yes, my biggest concern right now is that 50 to 60% of adult Americans do not have a will. I love a site called trustandwill.com. This site allows you to literally create a fully customized will in as little as 10 minutes for only $69. So there's absolutely no excuse to not protect yourself your family, your assets, your legacy. All right, well, Patrice, those are some really great tips. Uh, so for folks who might want some more information, how can they get it? Yes, just head to tipsontv.com. Okay, Patrice, thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today. Thanks, Clyde. Indeed, Mona. Well, for some older adults, having a pet is not an option, but that doesn't mean they can't have a companion. We went to the University of Cincinnati's robotics classroom to see how they're creating lifelike pets. Take a look. So what you're gonna see today is a little bit of part of the process of what we had been doing through this grant in trying to redesign the robotic pets to give new models of care for the older adult population. A lot of it based on bringing quality of care to people who are living alone uh, all around the, um, actually around the state, but around this region. So how can they create better service and support, particularly for people now who are over 80, which is one of the biggest population in the United States. When you talk about technology, uh, you must know Google Home and Alexa, and there are a lot of AI technologies or AI bots available outside to people, uh, but there is a there is a huge difference when you talk about how is it connected with the humans. I mean, everybody would like a pet in their home, you know, just being there around, giving some interactions, barking or, you know, wagging his tail or being happy, excited, etc. It gives a lot of emotions, but do you get the same sort of emotions in Alexa or something? No. So that's the whole point. Not only do these pets fulfill an emotional need for older adults, they can also alert caregivers of a fall or monitor their owner's heart rate for anything outside of normal activity. This technology isn't new, but UC is hoping to refine it for our aging population, even as they face things like degrading mental health. I also noticed uh, when I was observing someone with the pet that they also can talk to it. Very often people with dementia can't have conversations because they can't recall what they're thinking about fast enough. And what I found is that the individual that I was able to observe had ran the conversation. So it wasn't as if they were reacting, they were just talking to the pet. And I was amazed at how fluent that was compared to trying to talk with this person in a conversation, knowing that they're trying to figure out what question is being asked and they just can't quite stay within a conversation with, with two people. But the single directed conversation was very comforting for her. Though these particular pets aren't quite available to buy, Students and developers at UC have learned a lot in the process of refining these robotic pets. What we have learned is that pets have an important impact on the health of well-being. And knowing that not many older adults can have access to a real pet, we can you know, design a smart robotic pet that can have the same impact as a natural pet in someone's life. 
What a cool idea. Hey, we'll be back with more Cincy Lifestyle on the other side of the break. By the way, be sure to check us out on Facebook where we post all of our guest segments and community stories for you to watch and share with your friends. So like and follow us now, facebook.com slash Cincy Lifestyle. Stick around, we'll be right back. Only on Channel 9 can you get a rock forecast for the day that's <laughs> going to be gray and rocky. But the skies will also uh, be gray for a good chunk of the day today. Be a little cool out there, but uh, not a bad day. Mona? No, thank you. But um, yeah, I think we were looking for some frogs in those rocks. Yeah, I couldn't see oh, any, though. Oh, but yeah. Coming up tomorrow here on Cincy Lifestyle, we'll tell you about a happy meal for grown-ups. Mm. What started out as a hole in the wall has turned into the Queen City's best kept secret. Join us as we go behind the scenes and explore Dunlap Cafe. Ah, plus we dive into the world of women voters. We'll take you back to a time when suffragettes fought for equality and some of the more curious causes here in Cincinnati. Got all that and a whole lot more. It's happening tomorrow right here on Cincy Lifestyle. So Dunlap's uh, Mona does not refer to what happens to your belly if you eat there too much. <laughs> only you, Clyde, only you. <laughs> <laughs> Dunlap's disease. That's Cincy Lifestyle for this Wednesday, May 13th. Make it a great day. Hey, thank you so much for watching our video. Now, if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, be sure to make it a great day.